Well, uh, betting and gambling was a big part of your business. When you were yes. And in some other interviews, you talked about how you would get sports players to actually fix games when they were, they would get into gambling problems themselves. So can you yeah. talk about how these things would sort of progress to the point of them actually shaving points? Well, yeah, you know, re remember this. Let's separate the pros from college kids at this point in time. Because back in my day, you know, 70s and 80s, uh, pros weren't making the kind of money that they make today. You know, back then, you know, they made a half a million, a million bucks was a lot of money. But a lot of them gambled heavy. Now, you know, you're making a half a million dollars, you've got a gambling habit, you know, it's not a lot of money, especially the way these guys live. So I want to set that perspective up for you. So, you know, I had, I wasn't in the gambling business myself. In other words, I wasn't a bookmaker, but I had 12, 13 bookmakers that were working under me at that point in time. Now, why did that happen? A couple of reasons. When bookmakers needed money, you know, to finance themselves, I would lend them money. No problem. And secondly, you know, bookmakers take credit. You know, you don't, uh, they take credit. You don't pay in advance. So a lot of times they had collection problems. So they would come to us to help them collect. So a bookmaker always is associated in some way, shape, or form with organized crime if they, if they handle any kind of decent action, right? Okay, so I had all these bookmakers working for me. And they had a lot of athletes gambling with them. Not only athletes, but personnel, you know, involved with the various sports. So I'll give you an example. You know, I would have a bookmaker call me up and say, hey, so-and-so is playing with the Jets, the Mets, whatever team you want. And he's into me for 50 grand. You know, what do you want me to do? You want me to cut him off? And my answer would be, why would you cut him off? You're taking an entry on a piece of paper. Let him get into you for 250 grand, 300, 400, and then bring him to me. And I'll resolve it. And that's what would happen. You know, they'd get in there over their heads. They'd come and see me and say, hey, I guess you didn't know, but, you know, this is my operation. You're gambling with me. So here's the deal. You owe me 250000 How are you going to pay? Well, I don't have the money right now. Okay, let me tell you something. I'm a big fan of yours. I love the team. I support the team. You don't have to pay me all at once, okay? Pay me five points a week on the 250 In cash, every Friday, you bring it here. That's it. And take as long as you want. Well, they'll do that, you know, for... Um, a period of a time, but what they don't know that I know is that even though we cut them off, they're around town gambling with another bookmaker, thinking they're going to make the money back. So before you know it, they're in debt for five, six, seven hundred thousand. So now I bring them to me after the interest stops, and they said, "Look, how are you going to pay me back? You got a rich uncle? Go rob a bank? I don't care what you do. Bring me my money." Uh, you know, you see they're scared. So all right, I got another way to work this out. Here's how we're going to do it. Okay. You're a quarterback, okay, you're favored to win by 10 points. The first, time, first three times you get the ball, you put it in the hands of the other receiver. Put it in the defensive men's hands. You're a running back, you get the ball, you put it on the ground. First three times. You let me worry about the rest. You're going to do this until I tell you you're not doing it anymore. That's how I'll get my money back. What are they going to do? They're stuck. And they always did that. They, they, they had to. shave points in order not to pay back their gambling debt. They had no choice. Either that okay. or, you know, the, the, the threat is, we're going to put you in a hospital, you know? And right. I didn't have to say all. that, but they knew that. Because what I would tell them is a straight out, is one thing you don't understand, whether you're here, any city in the, in, in the country, or you're in Vegas, you're going to pay your debt. You're not going to get away with it. You owe a gambling debt you have to pay. And if you don't pay, there's serious consequences. So just work along with us. And that's it. That's all you had to say. Have you ever had to actually hurt a person who didn't want to go along with this? You know what? I pers I'm being honest with you. I personally didn't. And it was very rare that you did because if you get an athlete to work with you two or three games, pretty well you're going to get your money back unless you let them go and get into you for millions, which nobody's going to do. Nobody's going to do, because they know at that point there's nothing to gain. Um, but did I hear of, of guys getting hurt? Yeah. But it's, it was okay. rare. I want to be honest, because you didn't have to do that. Okay, now, you don't have to name any names, but these guys that were shaving points, can you tell me the team and the position <laughs> that they played at the time? And, you know, there's multiple quarterbacks, there's multiple running backs. People won't know exactly who we're talking about, but can you tell me the, the team name and the position of these guys that had to shave points for you? 
You know, I, I, I got in trouble once, okay, when I did an interview for a, a big network, and uh, they tried to get me to do this, and I said, look, I'm not going to name names. It, 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 first of all, it's going to open up a whole big thing. I know as soon as I say somebody, this is going to go wide, and I can't do that, and it's not going to accomplish anything. So uh, let me tell you this. Were there New York teams involved? Yeah. Were there teams around the country involved? Yes. Some people point to games where they can swear that had to be something done. And, you know, in some cases they might be right. You know, it was, it was a little bit obvious. But, um, look, it happens. There's no question about it. And, and it's going to continue to happen. Not as much on a pro level because these guys are making so much money. But, you know, you got to watch out for referees. Let me, let me tell you this. Let me set this up and see if this makes sense to you. you got a referee in an NBA game, okay? you got the Lakers now a favorite to win by 10 points. Favorite to win by 10 points. It's Christmas time. This referee, okay, needs some extra money. Maybe it's something in his family, a sickness or whatever. Maybe he needs a few. Who knows what he might need money for, okay? The Lakers are favored to win by 10 points. Okay, you know this. A referee can call a foul every time these players move down the court, or he doesn't have to call it if he misses it, right? So let's say Lakers are favored to win by 10. He puts a, get, a bet against the spread. Remember, it's the spread. It's not winning or losing. So how does he manipulate that? He puts LeBron James on the bench with two extra, three extra fouls. Keeps him down there three, four, five minutes longer. He does that the same with one or two of their key players. He can manipulate that spread so easily over a period of time that common sense tells you, okay, it could happen. Now, is every referee honest and upright? I'll leave that for you to decide. Okay, so does this happen? Of course it happens. There's too much money in it for it not to happen. Well, in 2007, NBA referee Tim Donaghy was yeah. actually found guilty uh, of gambling. That's uh, right. Was he involved with the mafia at all, or that was just personal gambling he was doing? He, he, unwittingly, he was involved. You know, he, well, when I say unwittingly, I don't think he knew the extent of the involvement, but he was involved with a couple of guys that were involved with mob guys. So, um, you know, we don't have to be that overt all the time. There's other guys in between. So, but yeah, I know Tim, you know, we've had many conversations and, uh, you know, look, he was doing what he was doing at that time. He can blame the NBA. I know he blamed the NBA and all of that. And, you know, I'm not going to get into that. And, you know, he has his reasoning for saying what he said, but, um, you know, l l let me tell you this. The problem with these things is that you talk too much. If a referee is doing that on his own, if I was a referee, and I had my son, my cousin, my best friend that I trusted more than anything, okay, I would work with that one person. I would never open my mouth. He would know exactly. I would tell him, hey, put a bet on so-and-so, and that's it. End of conversation. And you trust that guy. He's never going to give you up. You know, the problem is when you start talking about it and you go crazy and you do it too much, and, you know, that's when you get caught. But if you keep this very close to the vest, it's going to be very hard for you to get caught. Okay, so you actually knew Tim while he was gambling or no, afterwards? No, I knew him afterwards, not while he was gambling. Got it.